So it's good to be with you today. Well, we're here to share with you about the Word of God. We're here uh, to share with you about Jesus and to tell you about Jesus is the way. And uh, I think we'll share with you uh, from John 14. John uh, chapter 14. It says uh, in John 14, 4, it says, Whether you go or not, uh, and whether I go, you know the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I make what I wrote. He says, uh, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the Bible says, no one can come unto the Father but by me. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what the Bible teaches. What do you, what do you believe, guys? Do you believe Jesus is the only way? No, no. Have a debate with me. Have a debate. What do you believe? You, be, you believe in Allah, yeah? Does anybody here believe in evolution? That, that you've evolved from apes? In a second, if you have a debate with me, you want to debate? Yeah? You want to debate? What's your name? Are you, are you happy to debate with me? Okay. Who wants to debate me? What do you want to debate? Your favorite football team. Now, who is your favorite football team? Well, well, I know you want to debate about your favorite football team. No. What are your beliefs? Okay. What do you think about Jesus? Do you think Jesus is the Son of God? Yeah? No. Jesus is the Son of God and He died on that cross for you and He gave His life for you, yeah? So whatever you believe, you can, but you're, you're going to be famous, you're on candid camera. So if you, don't, if you don't want to be on camera, you need to go. Okay? Because you're going to be, you're going to be famous. Yeah, it's uh, jasonbirdspreacher.com. Okay? No, 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 unless you want to debate. If you stand there, I'll preach, and then you hear something. If you want a dialogue, just come and have a dialogue with me, yeah? If you stand there, if you stand there, I'm going to preach, and if you've got an objection, or you want to chat with me, have a chat with me, yeah? I'm just telling you about Jesus. That that is the only way to the life. Now give me your good best reason why Jesus is not the Son of God. Give me your best reason why Jesus is not the Son of God. That's a good one. Okay? How how did the universe how did the universe come from nothing? How did the universe come from nothing? Go. Eh? How did the universe come from nothing? I tell you what, I'll give you a glass of glass with nothing in it. Make something appear out of that glass. No, there's nothing in the glass. From the glass, make something appear. Nothing in the glass. No, no, no. Now you're being disrespectful. Whatever you believe, I respect. Now unless you're going to have a dialogue being respectful, you've got to move on and go and support City. Yeah? All right, you want a dialogue, a sincere dialogue. Okay, so, what's your name again? Okay, Will. Uh, Je Jebediah, okay. Well, Jebediah, what are your beliefs? What do you believe in? Okay, you believe in Allah, yeah? Okay, why do you believe in Allah? Allah is your culture, yeah? So why do you think I believe in Jesus? No, I, I, I wasn't a Christian once. But I committed attempted armed robbery down the road here. Yeah, and when I went to prison, I came out of prison. I started to go to church and I found that Jesus was real. And I found that Jesus saved me. So it wasn't my culture. It was something that changed my life, bro. 
Yeah, but when I went to church, it was two old ladies that invited me around and gave me some tea. And it was through their witness and reading books and the Bible that I knew that I was a sinner and I need forgiveness. Yeah? I committed attempt, commit attempted armed robbery, bro. I believe in God because He changed my life and I, and I connected with Jesus. Now, now how, much does, how much does football mean to you? Yeah? Right. How much do you spend on tickets going to see Man City? How, how, how much is your average ticket to go and see... Yeah. Okay. Then Jesus has to be the center of your life, not football. Yeah? Jesus. Yeah? If Jesus is the center of your life, then you find the meaning to life. But but football is not the center of your life. It's not the it's not the ultimate meaning to your life. The center of the center of the field. Yeah. Okay. Now here's a question for you. I'm going to ask you, what is the purpose of you being here on earth? Right? Right. The purpose of your life here, do you know what your purpose is? No, to enjoy God and to love Him and to love your neighbor as yourself. No, no, that is the purpose of your life. Okay? That is the purpose. And you've got to come through God through Jesus. And once you go to Jesus, you cannot know God, yeah? Okay. Okay. Whatever, whatever you believe, guys, I respect. Yeah. Whatever you believe, I respect. But I'm going to preach the gospel now. Okay. God bless you. I love you. God bless you. Have a nice day. And whatever you believe, I respect. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. And you... Okay. God bless you. Hey bro, God bless you man. God bless you. So we're here today to share about Jesus and these young gentlemen have been asking questions. Jesus Christ died on that cross and gave his life for you and he died to save you today. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the... Guys, thank you for your time. Guys, thank you for your time. Guys, thank you for your time. Okay. Guys, thank you for your time. Listen, that video is going to go viral if you keep doing that. Okay, God bless you. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. Now, there is a view called postmodernism. And postmodernism says that there are many views, many ways to heaven. But Jesus is saying, no, the only way to heaven is by him. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are there many ways to heaven, or is there one truth? Many ways to heaven, or is there one truth? Are there many ways to heaven, or is there one truth? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. Now... If you want to find the purpose to life, the meaning to life, you've got to find the truth. I said, I'm going to find the truth. You've got to find the truth. If you want to find the way to heaven, you've got to find the truth. And that truth is not an abstract thing. The truth is not just an abstract thing. Truth, truth is a person. Truth is a person. Truth is a person. Not an abstract thing, that's what truth is, it's a person. And if you believe in that person, you found the truth. Do you believe that, bro? Do you believe that? I believe in Jesus, yeah. Yeah, as your Lord and Saviour. As a prophet. As your Lord and Saviour, that's the important thing. Have a lovely day, guys. Have a lovely day. So, it's a person. And if you want to connect with God, you connect with a person through Jesus. That's how you connect. Yeah? You don't have to add one on one. You don't have to be logical. You don't have to be the brain of Britain. What you have to do is connect with Jesus. Connect with Him. You connect with God.
connect with him and you connect with God, yeah? You connect with Jesus, you connect with God, bro. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. I try to be friendly. You connect with Jesus, you connect with God, yeah? Not an abstract logical formula, but you connect with God through Jesus. So how do you connect with God? How do you connect with God? The way you connect with God is through a person and his name is Jesus. Yeah? That's how you connect with God. Now, there are many people in history that have said that they're God. There are many people in history that have said they're divine. There are many people in history that say that they're the way. But every single one of those people, number one, are dead. Number two, had faults. They were sinful. Buddha was a good guy, but Buddha was a sinner. Muhammad was a good guy, in your opinion probably, but he was a sinner. Uh, all the people in history who claim to be the way, who claim to have the answer, they were sinners. They'd done the wrong things in their life. But the thing about Jesus, he was perfect. He was a perfect person. There was nobody like Jesus. There was nobody like him in history. In history, he is above everybody else. He never had an army. Listen to this. He never had an army. Yet he's more famous than a general. He never wrote a book, but he's more famous than any writer. He never painted a painting, but he's more famous than any artist. He never wrote music, but he's more famous than any musician. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's above everybody. Above everybody in history. Above everybody in history. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, my friend. He is above all in history. And you know what? Political correctness will come and go. Communism came and went. Marxism came and went. Hegelianism came and went. Evolution will come and go. But you know the name of Jesus will last forever. His name will last forever and he is eternal. Yet Marxism came and went. Communism came and went. Hegelianism came and went. Every ideology comes and goes. But Jesus was here forever and ever. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Did you know that? Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is nobody in history, nobody in history like Christ. Muhammad is not as famous as Jesus. Buddha is not as famous as Jesus. Charles Darwin is not as famous as Jesus. There is nobody on this planet more famous than Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings. Jesus is more famous than Tommy Robinson. Jesus is more famous than any Prime Minister, any President. He's more famous because He is the Alpha, the Omega, the Son of God. And you better be on the right side of history, my friend. You better be on the right side of history. You better be on the right side of history, my friend. Are you on the right side of history? You better be on the side of Christ, whose kingdom is forever. Communism crumbled in 1980. Communism before the 1980s seemed powerful. It seemed mighty. But communism crumbled. It crumbled. It crumbled within a day when they pulled the wall down, the Berlin Wall. But before that, communism saw, thought it was mighty and powerful, but communism crumbled. And every empire will crumble. Political correctness might seem strong and mighty today, but it will crumble. It will crumble. And there will be preachers preaching for many years to come when political correctness will crumble by the side. For Christ is eternal. And we preach eternal message, eternal life for you. So which side are you on, my friend? Whose side are you on? 
Are you on the side of Christ? Are you on the side of Jesus? Whose side are you on? Whose side are you on, my friend? There's only two sides to be on today. On the side of Christ or on the side of the devil? On the side of Christ or on the side of the isms? Secularism and all the isms of the world. Which side of you are you on today? It's time to make a choice, my friend. It's time to make a choice today while you can. It's time to nail your colors to the mask today. Whose side are you on? Where do you choose to stand today? Are you standing on the side of Christ? Or are you standing on the side of political correctness? Are you standing on immorality? Or are you standing on the pure holiness of God and His Word? Are you standing on Jesus Christ as your Lord? Or are you standing on self? Belief in yourself. Belief in you. Belief in man. Belief in man's power. Man's ingenuity. Man's power, man's ingenuity will fail and will be broken. It will be broken under the ashes of history. It will be broken under the ashes of history. It will be broken under the ashes of history. Man's power and man's ingenuity, man's science will be broken under the ashes of history. But those who stand on the name of Christ will last forever. Those who stand on the name of Christ will last for eternity. Those who stand on the man's power and man's ingenuity will sink to the very depths of history and you will crumble, my friend. You will crumble. You will crumble on the man's power and ingenuity for man is flawed. Wherever man touches his fingers, there will be disaster. You give man scientific knowledge and he, what does he do? He creates National Health Service but he also creates the nuclear bomb. Man's power is a failure because man is fallen. He's a fallen creature. If you don't believe me, watch the television. If you don't believe man is fallen, watch the television. Watch EastEnders. Watch Coronation Street, backbiting, backstabbing, sleeping with this man, sleeping with that woman. You can see the fall of man there in your very television set. And if you don't believe man is falling, go look at the wars that man is starting now. Go look at the bombs that are going off in Yemen and the bombs that are going off in Syria. And it's all to do with oil, it's all to do with greed, because man is a failure, my friend. Man is fallen. He is a fallen creature. And you know what? Not only man is fallen, but I'm fallen and you're fallen. We are all fallen. We are all fallen creatures. And God has come to redeem us and save us as humanity. God has come to redeem us and save us as a people. God has come to save the nations. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. He's come to save the people by bringing a new community that is born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. To bring a new people who come under the Word of God. And man's power is satanic. Man's power is satanic. Satan and his demons are satanically working today to bring you and this nation down and you are following Satan and you are following his ways you are following him and you are outlined and sinking you are born into the system you are born into this world you enjoy this system you enjoy this world but it is taking you down to the very depths of hell because you are enjoying the things that God has told you not to enjoy that God has told you to come come and enjoy the kingdom of heaven to enjoy the things of God to come and enjoy Jesus and enjoy Him. My friends, my friends, I'm not fearful of the politicians today, for they have not got the answer. The answer is here. They're blowing in the wind. 
And you're blowing in the wind if you follow them. But I'm telling you, I have the answer, not me, but he in this word, the Bible. The Bible has the answer. The Bible tells you what's the problem. Man's heart is broken. Man's heart is a sinner. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. It's all politically incorrect, the Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments tell you, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. They stand above political correctness. They annihilate political correctness. The Ten Commandments are all the political correctness. The government might make a law saying you can lie, but the Bible says thou shalt not lie. The government might make a law, you can sleep around, but the Bible says thou shalt not commit adultery. The, the government might say you can shop on a Sunday, but the Bible says honor me, worship me on the Sabbath day. You see, the Bible's commandments stand above political correctness. And you have chosen to follow political correctness rather than the Bible. And when political correctness is washed away, I'll still be here preaching the Bible. And the Bible will still be relevant, my friend. The Bible will save So Let me ask you something. I'll go home right now. I'll go home right now and never preach again. You answer this question. How many souls has political correctness saved? How many souls has political correctness saved? How many? You bring me 10 drug addicts that political correctness has saved. I tell you what, I'll bring you thousands of drug addicts that have been saved through Jesus. Thousands of drug addicts have been saved by Jesus. Not one drug addict has been saved by political correctness. That's the power of Jesus, my friend. Forget your political correctness. It's Jesus that you need. Jesus is what our nation needs. Jesus needs to be in the schools and colleges, not political correctness. Political correctness is communism dressed up in drags. What we need is the word of God in our colleges, the word of God in the schools. That's what we need. And you can ignore me, and you can ignore me and ignore me, but guess what? I'm still here every Saturday. I'm still here every week, pumping out the Word of God. And one day you'll come and you'll say, thanks for preaching. You know what? There was a guy, a young guy. He came up to me. His brother committed suicide. He said, you know what? You preach every week here. You really care about us. You really care about us. Another guy on Spice over in Oldham, he came out of his house. He put his arm around me. He said, I heard you preach and I've been saved. There's a power in the Word of God, and you can ignore me all you want, but next week you're going to see my pretty little face. And the week after, you're going to see my pretty little face. And the week after that, you're going to see my little pretty face. Because I'm preaching the Word of God to you, my friend. I'm preaching Jesus to you. I'm preaching the Lord Jesus to you, and that's what you need. The thing that you need in your life, Jesus. Preach a man says you need Jesus. Preach a man is offering Jesus. Adventist. Preacher man is lifting up Jesus. Adventist. That's what I'm doing today. You say, what's he doing? Adventist. Lifting up Jesus. Look to Jesus. That's what I'm doing. God bless you. I'm lifting up Jesus so that you can believe. So that you can know his love. So that you can know his peace. So that you can know his joy. So that you can come into the kingdom. So that you can be saved. That's all preacher man is doing. He's lifting up Jesus. You can arrest me. You can beat me up, you can kill me, you can do whatever you want to me. But preacher man is lifting up Jesus today for you. I'm lifting up his name. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of the end. You can't say that of Parliament. You can't say that of the BBC. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of the end. You're not the Alpha and the Omega. You're not the beginning of the end. It's Jesus. And Jesus is offering you today his love. Some of you here are struggling with worry, you're struggling with addiction, you're struggling with marriage difficulties, you're struggling with financial difficulties, you're struggling with... Some of you are sad, some of you are broken, some of you are limping, but I want to tell you that Jesus saves and Jesus loves you, and Jesus wants you in the kingdom today, and you need to put all your tears in the bottle of Jesus' love, you need to put all your tears in the word of God and know that God will carry you today. Know that God will carry you today. 
Know that Jesus will carry you. Know that His love will be with you. Know that His love is with you today. That Jesus loves you. And He's with you today. He's with you today. His love is 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 with you today. If you're happy and you know it, praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it, praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know it, preach your Bible. If you're happy and you know it, preach your Bible. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, preach your Bible. If you're happy and you know it, give someone a hug. If you're happy and you know it, give someone a hug. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, give someone a hug. If you're happy and you know it, tell your mom you love her. If you're happy and you know it, tell your mom you love her. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, tell your mom you love her. If you're happy and you know it, trust in Jesus. If you're happy and you know it, trust in Jesus. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, trust in Jesus. Trust in Where are you going today? Where are you off today? I wonder what journey you're on today. Did you know some of you are on the journey to hell? Did you know some of you right now are on the very verge of falling into hell? Is that the journey some of you were on? That you're on that journey and that you're on the very pit of falling into hell? Is that what you want to do? I don't want you to fall into hell. I want you to go to heaven. And there's a way to heaven, my friends. There is a way to heaven. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I like to do this. I'll do it for you. See if anybody comes. I'll give you 10, sec 10 seconds to prove evolution is true. I'll give you 10 seconds to prove to me evolution is true. I'll give you 10 seconds to prove to me that evolution is true. Are you ready? 10 seconds. 10 seconds to prove to me we came from apes. Are you ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10 seconds to prove to me we came from evolution. Come on now. You can do it if you try. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've been doing this for seven years or more, and nobody's ever come here and proved to me that we came from apes. I had a PhD came, she came here. And she's a PhD in biology, and she said, I'll debate you. And I asked her a question. I said to her, what is the mathematical probability of evolution developing the eye. You know what she said? I'm going to get a drink. And she wouldn't debate me. I met a PhD in biology at Liverpool University and he gave me all this biological evidence and I said to him, what is the mathematical probability of evolution creating the eye? And you know what he did? He walked off. No evolutionist can answer these questions. What is the mathematical probability of your brain being produced by evolution? Think about it. What is the mathematical probability that your brain created by evolution? What is the mathematical probability that your brain was created by evolution? You know what? That is a question to send every biologist PhD all dispatched never to return again friends you know there's a god you know you were created in the image of god and you know pardon? god bless you bro have a nice day have a nice day i like your smile and your style you know there's a god and i don't have to prove it to you you know there's a god through creation the order of creation you know there's a god in your heart you know that's what is right and wrong? 
that you're a sinner and you need forgiveness. I prove it to you. And Jesus says to you today, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Please, please think about that today. What's your truth? What's your truth today? What's your truth? Answer that question. What's your truth? Jesus says, I am the truth. What's your way? What is your way? What are you trying to do? Where are you? What is your way? Jesus says, I am the way.